this is part two of just general general stuff I learned while stumbling around in the dark around around leather work uh, last time um, basically covered making holes for rivets rivets and and um, and eyelets for lacings this this time I guess it should be uh, stitching I uh, this one here I used two needles two needles going from opposite directions uh, with this artificial sinew and and sewed all the way around all the way around this seam um, after after I glued um, the layers together with rubber cement uh, well there's a couple of different lessons learned about that um, the biggest one is once you've glued uh, uh, two things together with rubber cement um, they're stuck together but there's a layer of glue in the middle of that and that's sticky rubber is what it is what it amounts to and that shouldn't be real a big surprise because it's called rubber cement uh, what that does is every time you you stick a needle through um, the the glue is going to stick on the side of the needle and it's going to it's going to try to stop it's going to fight that needle all of, all of the way through so my suggestion for for using a glued seam is to make your holes put it together completely first uh, make your holes all the way through and then take it apart put your glue on it and then and then sew it that way that way you can avoid having to fight the leather and the glue and the leather and pulling the string um, because otherwise otherwise it's just it's um, um, it's it's a lot of hassle that you really don't need to deal with um, this is a this is a, another pouch that I made. I made it by taking taking leather, wrapping it around in a U, and then putting in side panels. Um, then I over I put this together inside out, and then turned it and then turned it the right way. Uh, and then afterwards afterwards I put pockets on the inside. Um, as an afterthought, but the one thing that I didn't think of while putting the pockets on the inside is that your seams, your seams are going to be visible on the outside, and if your seams aren't absolutely straight, they're going to look like um, you freehanded the whole thing, which basically I did, but um, I didn't because this one was the first one that was actually planned out to a certain degree. Uh, to sew this one, I used one of these um, single stitchers, hand sewers, and I learned another big lesson. They use they use needles like this. This is a sewing machine needle, big sewing machine needle, and it's got um, it fits it fits in the top here, and then the the string will come out of the bobbin, come up through the middle, come up through. There's a hole. There's a hole in in the side where it goes up through the middle of that joy, joint. Um, the side of the needle is grooved, and then it goes. Then the the thread goes through the, uh, the eye of the needle. Pretty slick setup, pretty basic. But the important part is the shape of the needle. Isn't anything like 
the shape of the needles in any of the industrial sized needle packs that you can pick up anywhere else. This has got this has been sharpened on three on three facets. So it's a real steep pyramid shape on in this that shape um, will punch through leather so much easier than a rounded shape. It's just it you it's just um you basically have to try it. You, you, uh, it's it's one of those dr uh, the dramatic difference in performance that um, somebody telling you about it is just is just um, you're not going to believe it until you actually experiment with it yourself and uh, uh, and figure it out. But there, uh, this is full this is full thickness cowhide. Uh, it hasn't been skived on the inside at all. So it's got the rough, it's got the rough edges on the inside, and then it's got the smooth edge on the outside, and uh, uh, I don't know if you can, if you can see the seam in there or not, but I was going through more than a quarter of an inch of leather uh, with absolutely no problem at all. But the sewing machine is a much neater. Um, it's a much neater result once you turn it inside out. Um, the way to like I could approve this is to weigh is to weigh these seams down, wet them, weigh them down, and fold these real tight. That way, that way um, it won't look it won't look as uh, folded or puckered on the outside. But other than that, the the stitching is fairly neat. I could have, I could have improved this with with uh, by knowing uh, yet another lesson. Uh, one way, the old way to get very even stitching is to throw a straight edge down that's graduated onto your piece of leather. Throw a um, use a pen or a pencil draw a straight line and then mark your stitch spacing along that um, and that's one way of getting even spacing. Another way is to use a pinwheel. And pinwheel has got it comes in a kit. It's got this one's got three different wheels. You can buy another kit that's got big other that's got other kinds with different spacings and and with this all you've got to do is you can still draw your straight line where you want it but you can all you got to do is etch it and it'll it'll go through and make your spacing everywhere you see a dimple that's that's where that's where you stick your needle pretty pretty slick another another tool um, I don't know what the name of this is but it's used it's it's got a chiseled edge but it, but it, it isn't it comes to a point but it's not sharp it's not meant to cut it's meant what it's meant to do is to make a depression in the leather and once you make your depression then you can go back then you can go back with with your with your stitcher or with the um, or with your needle and and sew along the seam and your thread will end up down in the bottom of that depression and it'll be below the surface layer of your um, below the surface layer of your, of your leather uh, but if you don't want to spend the 15 almost everything from every tool made by Tandy uh, they charge fifteen dollars for it so if you don't want to spend the fifteen bucks um, you can do the same thing with a 
putty scraper. But since you don't want a sharp edge, you'll need to dull. You need to round off and dull dull the edges. You need to dull the the um, the corners too, so you don't end up cutting things. But with this, you can do the same things as you do with this, except you'll do it on a, on a larger scale. You could even pound on the back side to, uh, to drive this down with, a, with the wooden mallet, the Tandy kit. Tandy kit comes with a, with a wooden mallet you can use, or you can make your own. If you wanted to uh, thread using um, using the artificial sinew or using a flat uh, thong like uh, the old edge wrap sewing the the Indian style as what I call it uh, leather projects they make a, a pitchfork like this and with that you can do the same thing with your spacing except the spacing is already there and use this to with your with your mallet and an anvil underneath of it you can you can put your holes through on an even spacing if you overlap the pitchfork with with your last hole you can keep all of your spacings even all the way along your seam but You could also make one of these from a low-cost putty knife. Only thing you got to do is is cut your slots in, make sure your slots are cut even, and you'll be able to make make this tool at the same time. Um, I call it a dent maker. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's a uh, you can you could use a this is a bargain bin tool uh, comes in a kit with about six of these different shapes uh, for I'm not exactly sure what all they're used for I use it for spreading glue and epoxy but the this would work for making the impressions also you could take an oversized old beat up screwdriver big standard screwdriver and you can do the same thing with it with a little bit of grinding uh, you don't want a sharp edge you want a flat dull edge rounded works pretty good because you can rock it in um, you can rock it in and make your depression and marks and uh, you know run from there so I hope that I hope that made sense. Uh, a lot of this stuff I had to figure out on my own, um, so I'm just I'm just making making the comments now so that um, you can take it and uh, and find out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. I've got other projects that I'm starting starting with different pieces. That's why I've got everything out. It has to do with magnifying glasses and roller skate wheels. But, um, yeah, that's what, uh, that's what I do here. That's, this covers basically sewing and needles. And we'll let you go.